we're so used to letting things happen to us that we don't even take a second to think. And for me, art is all about thinking. When I get quiet in my head and it's like, why am I doing this? And how do I put a face on it? And how do I promote the arts and community? Um, animals were the perfect picture for that. People see an animal and they do see a vulnerability. They do see, you know, somebody that needs their care. They can't speak and they're completely vulnerable, like an infant. They're just completely vulnerable and they're, they need us. They need us to have, be stewards for them and to look out for them and we do. And I think kind of taking that line of thought to the arts and giving the arts a face. And I thought, well, we're kind of like an endangered species because you know funding's being cut and um, we're constantly fighting for our lives and we need community support. And then came the face of an endangered species animal. Putting a pin in history and we're saying here in 2011 at Art Out Loud, we care about our neighbors, we care about music, we care about just stating who we are, this big affirmation of life and, um, and what it looks like. It makes it more historic and archival and you know, you have to be thinking beyond yourself. And I think Big Green Cherry Mint, they're really environmentally sound and um, they're, a lot of their message is green. But Art Out Loud is on such a big stage, it's almost, you have to be, you gotta be really big, you know, and so everything has to be bigger, so our dynamics have to be bigger and uh, our, our music has to be bigger. And really, to do that, you have to be very vulnerable on stage as well. You kind of have to be very personal and, and show who you are and, you know, really just kind of leave a piece of yourself on the stage. And that's what everyone is trying to do tonight. Um, all the acts from Thrive to Starryville, Big Green Cherry, and the Mummers, they are going to try to put on the best performance they can. But to do so, they're going to leave it all out there. So it right. should be fun. Give us a yeah. big hand for Calvin and for Julia in Thrive. Come on up here. <laughs> We're very harmonic. Everything about our music is about our vocals, which is which is why you know when we're on stage, everything is just stripped down to a guitar or a piano because that's really all we need. We would love to do more. We will do more, um, but that our vocals are thrive. We wouldn't be able to. I have to say, individually, we could, as she said, we could do our own things. But you know, once we once we come together, we move forward so much more, we do so much better, and we do right. so many different things that we wouldn't do um, on a normal basis with just my music or just her music, you know, or just her her vision or my vision, and and uh, so in essence, when, when it all comes down to it, together we thrive. You take it. <laughs> uh, we were kind of sort of friends in high school. We knew each other. She was popular. I was kind of popular. It was just like, hey, look at you. I know you. Yeah, you know, we, we were acquainted with each other. And then one day, she said that she was going to be back in town. And I said, okay, well, let's meet up. You know, let's go hang out. I don't really remember us being that great of friends, but we met up. I can only do half, write half the songs, you know. I, I'm only really good about writing the verses. And she goes, oh, well, I'm only really good at writing the chorus. <laughs> I'm like, oh, okay. I said, well, I play the guitar, and I'd love to play the piano, too. She goes, oh, well, I play the piano. <laughs> so it really was just all of the puzzle pieces, like, falling together. And we went home that night and wrote three songs. Yeah, just knocked them out. And, and I think that was the moment for me, was it had never been that easy before. Never. Like I, and then I went home and tried to write without him, and I couldn't because it was so magical. It was such an amazing moment. Um, I've always been very moved by the romantic, um, romantic art, and how how small the human looks compared to this vast scenery, and how how everything around you and nature itself is consumes you, and you're the smallest thing, and we all get so wrapped up in our emotions and, and society, and, and you're so small compared to all of these these bigger things in life. You know, trees that have been around for hundreds of years, and and you know, just it's it's so relaxing to just be so small and and be moved by this massive world around us. So that that's why I, I pull that in. Mm -hmm. 
never caught my attention, never said you were the one, no. But I tried and I got tired of by a lie, and now I cannot be undone. I had the cruelest intentions, and I admit that it was fun, no. Opportunity was knocking at the door, I had my chance to make a run for it. But what if I tried? As long as we're alive together, we thrive. And we, just, we always say that to each other a lot, because that is, that's what we do. How many times will it take for you to get the taste of me? How strong should I be for you to leave and let me breathe? Don't know how much longer I can take this love. How way I think we feel personally to do that is to make yourself known and to make it, make your, give yourself a reputation. Being successful is having a voice. Having a voice that is respected. People are listening to you. And becoming motivated from the things that you do. It would be getting, getting others moved to do things for others. Thank you, thank you, Mary. It's awesome. Our band is called Storyville. We are totally in support of the arts, as you can see, because we're here. Having a bump requires you to carry your guitar differently. I 
I think I was roller skating and uh, listening to, when I was about nine or 10, and I was listening to Blondie, and I was roller skating in my basement around a, a pole. And I think that was my first hint that I really liked music. When I was a little kid, my parents always had music playing, so I just, it just was always there. Can't imagine, <laughs> you know? Uh, it might. It's just like in there now. Yeah. It just has to be there. You're talking about something that just happened over millions of years, and they were able to put a stage there for, for bands and singers to, to perform. I mean, it's just, it's such an oddity in and of itself, but I, I think it just amazed me just to be in this place that was made. I mean, it just came out of the ground thousands of years or millions of years of, of evolution and rocks falling apart. I'm a big water person, like liquid music, so get into a flow. Like being at the beach and the waves, I think that's where kind of the name started though. Beach and it's dark and everything just glows at night. Think about that kind of thing when uh, we're playing. Radioactive? Maybe. Our nose is a scientist, he, uh, he's a solar physicist, with, so the sun is a star, so it kind of... Facing the sun, look at the big sky, fade into dust. So after about eight or nine months of no activity, Ed calls me on the phone and says, I, I got to do something for my addiction. You know, you want to start a band? I goes, yeah, 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 let's start a band again. I said, but I have um, one request. Um, we, we need uh, a female voice. So let's get, you know, let's get a girl, a woman, anybody, but we need to change it up. Four guys yelling at a microphone just kind of, you know, old at 20 years. So, damn, yeah. I'll step up on that. I'm, I'm no! Oh, yeah. <laughs> You're human, and if you have a spell put on you, you turn into a like a troll, oh, troll-like yeah. creature. So if you eat a big cream cherry, then you turn back into a human. We played that one show, and like we kept getting interrupted by the oh. the wrestling match on the. Yeah. Like, we were like, please pay attention to us. And every time something happened in the wrestling match, people were cheering. <laughs> I was like, we thought it was for us. The World Cup game got pretty heated at times. Yeah. <laughs> but again, so what were our policy going for? It's no televisions while we were playing music. <laughs> Turn them off. 
Whenever you feel the inability to hold on, you're on your last string, your last thread. Hold on, take the pain, and carry on. Fleck. He was with Stanley Clark and Jean-Luc Pani, arguably the three best musicians with their instruments. And after the show, Bela came out and he was talking to people, and Leslie said, go down and talk to him. I went down there, I stood beside him, I went, uh, you know, I mean, I didn't, it was nothing, I had nothing, you know? It's probably the same thing, you know, you tell me what you want, I'm delivering. <laughs> 